back to Morbidly Bewitched. In the last video, I talked about cryogenics and in this video, I'm going to be talking about aquamation. Aquamation actually isn't a brand new concept. It has been around since the turn of the 20th century, but back then it was used mainly for the disposal of farmyard animals. Now it's starting to creep its way back in and it's used for things like the disposal of bodies that's been donated to science and the disposal of clinical waste. It goes by many, many names, not just aquamation. Oh no, it's also called green cremation, biocremation, resumation, water cremation, and its real name, which is alkaline hydrolysis. So why would you choose aquamation over the traditional flame-based cremation? Well, it's greener. And in today's society where we are becoming more conscious and aware of what we're doing to the earth, this does seem like a better option. Aquamation actually only uses about one twelfth of the energy that would be used in a traditional cremation. If you want to put that into perspective, that's similar to the difference between lighting an office or lighting a football stadium. So if you are a little eco warrior, then this might be a better option for you. But what's involved? Well, let's start off with the machinery itself because it is an impressive piece of kit. Coming in at a whopping $400,000, this machine does everything for you. It's kind of similar to the way you and I would get out and we would drive our cars, but we're not mechanics. We don't know the mechanisms that go on beneath the hood. That's what this big machine does. It's a huge steel drum with lots of pieces of machinery attached to it, but it's all digital. It's cylindrical in shape, very long to accommodate even larger bodies, far larger bodies than you would imagine the machine could even take. So how does it all work? The porous tray actually comes out of the whole machine, but it's still attached, which means you can set the body into the tray and then slide the whole unit back in. The body itself is recommended no embalming, as I say, this is quite green, and no other surrounding container, so no coffin, no liner. At the very most, the body would be set in with a biodegradable hessian sheet or silk. Once the body is in the machine, or resumator, I quite like that word, the entire machine is tilted to a 45 degree angle. This allows a continuous flow of water to pass over the remains. And yes, it is mainly water that's doing the job. It's actually the water molecules using the collision theory in science that breaks down the soft tissue. The other 5% is the potassium hydroxide. The mixture itself is heated to approximately 300 degrees Fahrenheit. It can be lower than that, about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. The only thing is then you compromise on time. Yes, unfortunately, this lovely little green saver does take longer than a standard cremation. Standard cremations are normally about two hours, whereas your resume is going to degrade a body over the course of six to eight hours at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're in a machine that's 200 degrees Fahrenheit, you're gonna be looking at about 16 hours to reduce that body down. Another job the potassium hydroxide actually does is sterilize the body. Along with the heat, it's the only form of disposal of human remains that we have that completely disinfects the leftover tissue so that everything that's being put back into the water system is safe, even the bones that's left behind in the machine. That means that the lovely side effect of what's left behind is pure calcium phosphate in the form of the skeleton. 
pure white like the driven snow, which means when they get put inside a cremulator, the same as you do in a cremation, the dust that's handed back is lovely and white and clean. Oh, is that the process finished? They're so clean. Not to say that the cremator remains you get back from a standard cremation aren't clean, they are, but there is other contaminants in there that has made the cremator remains the color. The gray, slightly brownish color of the standard cremator remains is completely different looking to your aquamation ashes. Other medical devices that are left behind are also left in a pristine condition, like your hip replacements, your implants, which means that actually throws up a possibility of the reuse of these medical devices and again makes things more green. With flame-based cremation, yes, all of these implants are removed once the cremated remains are brought out of the incinerator. The only difference is when it comes to things like plastics and silicones, they are burnt up just the same as the remains are, which means that toxic air is released into the atmosphere. Medical devices such as hip replacements and joints are far too damaged after the process for the possibility of them to be reused. Your final options are then just the exact same as what they would be if you get cremated remains handed back to you from a standard flame-based cremation. If you want to check out my other videos, I have a part one and a part two of episode three of what to do with ashes. So how much does all of this crazy technology cost? It sounds extremely expensive. Hmm, you would think so. But depending on the region, it actually comes in around the same price as a standard flame-based cremation, which is unusual considering the cost of the machinery that's used. But if you do look at different countries, different states, the price of cremation does change drastically between each place. So, Again, so well, resumation. Unfortunately, it's not fully legalized in all countries. At the minute, they are trying to get the ribbon cut for different states across America, but it hasn't quite reached the UK just yet. This is available for your pets too. There's a couple of lovely companies over in America that does this for your pets. Um, same process, just a miniature version. It turns out the majority of people would actually pick aquamation over the traditional flame-based cremation. The doubters are the people that have this unhealthy thought that it's kind of like taking everything that makes that person who they were and flushing them down the toilet. But that's not the case. It's quite similar to all other forms of disposal of human remains and this is kind of just a, a theory that's being bounced around that's making it sound quite unpleasant when it really is not unpleasant at all. It's quite clean, it's very green, it's very very dignified and respectful, it's just down to personal preference. So there you have it. That's your little slice of information on aquamation. <clears throat> Join me in my next video when I'm going to be talking about donating your body to science. Please subscribe and I'll see you soon.